I think to the extent that um, we have had bureaucratic corruption almost in an exponential nature since Jomo Kenyatta's time, that is definitely true. I, I think the extent to which the bureaucracy has uh, been increasingly corrupt has, 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 been, has, has negatively affected the, the economy and what we say ethics in the public sector. That is one of the reasons why the 2010 constitution had a very important chapter on integrity in public office. And secondly, that is why again the 2010 constitution created a lot of commissions uh, basically to one, uh, to look after individual rights or human rights, but two, to enforce ethics in the public sector. It's a very, that's a very unique characteristic of our constitution. It's the only constitution I find where specific commissions in the public sector are created by the constitution, not by just laws in parliament. But unfortunately, notwithstanding a very progressive constitution, we have not made a lot of progress in fighting corruption in the public sector. And that explains the recent uh, vigor by which the president has realized that a lot is still going wrong and something needs to be done about corruption. That is what I can say. One, I think, by better planning for economic productivity in, 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 in our economy, I think Kenya can still feed more people than it's feeding now because a lot of Arab land or semi-Arabo land has not been, been put to maximum production in terms of agriculture and an animal husbandry for that, for that matter. Uh, you cannot rely on old methods of agriculture and old methods of, uh, of animal husbandry in a society where the population is increasing and when more and more people are living in, in urban areas. As you, know, as you know, the U.S., the majority of people live in urban areas, but agriculture is extremely productive. Uh, and it, that is something that we should learn, uh, that as more and more people live in urban areas, more and more productivity in agriculture. Must, must, be, must be implemented. Uh, you cannot rely on importing food to, to this population because that depends on how much money you have for importing food. So as much as possible, you must have domestic self-sufficiency in food production as much as possible so that your people don't go hungry. But the second thing is what we've been discussing here. How do you house these people? Uh, and it's not rocket science, like my friend um, was saying just now in our discussion. The manner in which you use, and I'm very passionate about this, the manner man in which you use physical space must change. I think high-rise apartments in, 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 in towns and cities, and even in rural areas, don't go to the extent of the Chinese. The Chinese have now found that they have a lot of high-rise apartments in the rural areas which are not being used. I mean, we shouldn't go that direction, but nonetheless, better use of physical space in habitation will deal with this problem. And finally, these people must have incomes, whether they are in agriculture or in urban centers, they must have income to live on. Otherwise, we're going to have cities and urban centers of crime and disorder, which definitely will stay doomed for us in the future. I think it is doable. I don't think 95 billion people will that much of a problem in a big country like Kenya and tremendous potential to, to look after these 95 million people. To me the response is very simple. Over a century ago when the British came to colonize Kenya, they decided to build a railway from Mombasa to Uganda to the source of the Nile as it were. And they didn't really have a major big plan for it. They just knew they were going to build a railway from Mombasa to, 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 to the source of the Nile. They didn't even know where the source of the Nile was, but they 
have a good idea what Livingstone said that to some many of the yeah, in, in Victoria. And by the way, there's a new book challenging <laughs> the, the Livingstonian theory of history. But nonetheless, they did it. And on the way, they met all kinds of obstacles. The Manitas who suffered, for suddenly they arrived in Nairobi and they said, this place is beautiful, it has water, let's stop here. I mean, now we can do better than that. We should have planned better for the standard gauge railway. It would have, should have been better financed, I think. Uh, there are certain areas where where the Santa Gate really followed, it shouldn't have followed in the first place. But, and finally, in terms of bureaucratic corruption, it shouldn't have cost as much as it did. I mean, we have compared the prices which the Tanzanians are building the, the Central Railroad using the Turkish money and Turkish technical assistance, and the money in the Ethiopian bid the railroad from in December, but to be put um, electrified hours is diesel and so on, with the old locomotives, I would say. Uh, and I think those mistakes can be avoided and do a much better job than we do. We knew it the railway. We, we need much more quicker ways of going from one place to the other, not the old so-called lunatic line. It is still good. I think it can't be uh, discarded. But nonetheless, I think we would have done a better job. And we should still need to build more railways and more tramways in cities and so on. Because railways are cheap and better to have transport. Uh, and I think that the experience of West Standard Gauge Railway it's a lesson to learn from, and not, not, not a scare to abandon railroad building because we shall always do it like we did the SBI. It's not God given that we must do it that way. Kenya. Because Kenyans are capable of solving their problems when they arise, uh, I think, and then Kenya is a very open society, I and mean, things are discussed openly. Uh, the government may get annoyed and, 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 and react sometimes rather quickly as they did <laughs> in the morning. But Kenyan society is very resilient. I mean, the struggle to ensure that Kenya is a free democratic society has been very consistent and, uh, and, and has produced results. And I do believe that what we are currently doing of re-examining our constitution and saying that this presidential so-called democracy is not good for us and we need to have a parliamentary system is true to our history and true to the manner in which this problem should be solved now. And I know that there's resistance because they have vested interest in the system, but that is the nature of political struggles. You don't you don't wage a struggle because everybody agrees, you wage a struggle because there are people who resist and their resistance must be defeated for a better alternative.